studied birds in North America. They're so small that it takes very special methods to study them. They don't flock, and so we can't, for example, monitor flocks on radar. We can't put transmitters on them because they're so tiny. They're not often studied by uh, banding methods. The only way that we can fully understand what a population of animals is doing is by knowing what the individuals are doing, how they're reproducing, what their lifespan is, what their travels are, and that's what we're focusing on here on the San Pedro River with these hummingbirds. Once they come in and, and come to the front of the feeder, I'll go up, herd them back into the net. We actually have to chase them into the net. We, we hang a feeder at the opening of the net. Then as soon as they're looking the other way, we go dashing toward them. They're trapped. Because they're so intelligent, it takes special methods to catch them. We carry them to the banding table and very carefully apply that, that band. And then we take all of their data. 28 is the tail length, long tail. Looks like a little war bonnet, doesn't it? Isn't that beautiful? Everybody get a chance to see that beautiful tail? What a lovely little bird she is. Not in disposition, but physically she's beautiful, like some, uh, some temperamental supermodel or something. She's uh, cranky, but she is gorgeous. Hummingbirds are, of course, really special birds. Uh, they perform a unique job in nature. Here in southeastern Arizona, because we have such a wide variety of habitats, we have a wide diversity of species of hummingbirds. And we have a unique opportunity here to discover how these species accommodate uh, with one another, how they compete, but also how they coexist. this. Our favorite answer when people ask us, how do you band a hummingbird, is very carefully. 